is the third person of the Trinity, a bird. Um, go look at some scriptures here. One of the big things that the uh, Trinity defenders, they'll say, you can clearly see the Trinity, Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. Let's look at this. It says here, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, does not say that it was a dove, and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. They say, See, Jesus is in the water. The Spirit comes down, you know, the dove, they'll say, or, you know, the text says like a dove. It does not say it was a dove. But the Spirit comes down like a dove, and they hear a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Well, um, first of all, let me point out the fact, the biblical Godhead is Jesus is the body, God is the soul, and the Holy Ghost is the spirit. These three are one, one being. All right, uh, that's what the Bible teaches, and been over that many times before. But let me just prove a point here. You say, well, no, it was a separate person. God was a separate person in heaven, saying, "This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased." Because um, the soul can't talk, right? Well, let's check about that real quick. Revelation chapter six. Down here we go, and it says. Uh, Verse 9, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And uh, white robes were given unto every one of them. So a soul can speak, a soul can wear a white robe doesn't make them a separate person from their bodies that are laying down on the earth. Body, soul, spirit can separate. Now, we can't do it because we're just mortal men. Well, I can't just say, okay, watch this and, and split body, soul, spirit. But God can. And that's what's going on in Matthew chapter 3. Let's go back there again. Matthew chapter 3. Uh, here. So you have this... God there in heaven, the Father, God the Father in heaven, and he is saying, he is speaking as the soul of the Godhead. All right? And again, people, well, where's, where does it say the specific words, God is a soul? Um, well, I'm not familiar with any verses, but uh, just logically reason the thing out here, people. If Jesus Christ is the physical body that people are seeing, and the Holy Ghost is a spirit, the Holy Spirit you know, uh, there's only one thing left for God the Father. That would be the soul. You say, well, the Bible says God is a spirit. Yes, God is a spirit. God is a soul. God is a body. All right. People just don't get it. But uh, so right there. And but notice, this is very important here. He saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. It doesn't say that it was a dove. All right. It's. He descends like a dove. So it could have been some kind of a thing of light or whatever else that kind of comes down like a like a bird would, kind of comes down and lands on it. You gotta be very careful about this stuff. Mark chapter one, verse ten. Um we'll start at verse nine. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John and Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Um, again, see, it's a separation of the Godhead. The Lord can do that. Um, if you separate your body from your spirit and your soul, your body is going to drop over and hit the ground. All right. Uh, the Godhead can do something that man can't do. That's the thing that separates it. But if the Godhead is one body here, another body here, and another body here. Not really much of an impressive thing. It's just three different gods. But they're one god. That's right, I forgot. You know, <laughs> Insane. But uh, let's look at the next one here. Now here you're getting a little bit closer, but still, look at it. Luke 3, 3 verse 22. 
uh, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. So it's a bodily shape like a dove. But does that mean that it was a dove? No, it does not. So where is the Catholic Church getting all this stuff from? This bird thing. And again, and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, and thee I am well pleased. So Luke's account of the whole thing. Now we go to John, the last one here. John chapter 1, verse 32. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. All right. Um, and I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending. Well, didn't it say the bird descending? The dove descending. No, the Spirit descending. Like a dove. And remaining on him, the same as he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. All right. Son of God there. All right. I've never taught against the Son of God. I teach against God the Son. Because that phrase does not appear in the King James Bible. All right. But again, all right, um, so you have basically the people, if you believe in this Catholic Trinity thing, then uh, there's your Trinity there, there's a Trinity there. I mean, why not use the Trichetra and there's you have that thing. Um, but what's wrong with this right there, that depiction? If you believe in the Catholic Trinity, there's not three persons, it's two persons and a bird, all right? Uh, am I right? Am I wrong? That's... You know, weird, very, very, very weird. But I found some some pictures. I was talking to uh, Brother Jeremy Carter last night, and I found some pictures. We got to talking about this thing of the charismatics and this, what's the deal with this dove thing? Is there some tie-ins to the mark of the beast? Because the mark of the beast is uh, very interesting. Let me show you that real quick. Um, Revelation chapter fourteen. I'll get rid of that dove thing. I'll just put this out there. The third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, now look, no, look at the three here, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. There's three. Worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. There's three things there. Is that because there are one, two, three? I think so. Yeah. But we got to talking about this thing of the dove. What could that be? What's, what's this deal with this whole bird thing? Very interesting. I remember back when I was in Pennsylvania, there was this charismatic cult building, and they had this, you know, the the dove coming down from heaven and the things, you know, in flames, you know, the the fire. God puts fire on you, you know, this whole thing. Then I was telling Brother Jeremy about that, and uh, I found some pictures here that I think are pretty interesting. So there you have this. This is from a charismatic cult building here. Come, you know. Incoming, I think they should say instead of come, it should be incoming, you know. <laughs> Flaming dove coming down. There's another one. Charismatic website. Stained glass one, you know, got flaming dove coming down there. And it's got the circle of the, the nimbus there around its head. That's what it's called in the occult. It means it's a god. There you have confirmation. This was from a Catholic website here. Uh, just took snapshots of the uh, things there, but confirmation. Piety, wisdom, understanding, fear of the Lord, counsel, fortitude, knowledge. But notice the way the thing is formed. Upside down, kind of an upside down cross, really. And it's coming down, it's got the nimbus around its head. The special nimbus with the cross inside of it. You know, that's, that's the special one. That's the one you want if you're, you know, want to be God and all that stuff. But this is in St. Peter's Basilica. And notice up here. Uh oh, what do we have there? Um, I think that's a dove. Hmm. Even though the Bible doesn't say that the Holy Spirit is a dove, like a dove, he appeared like a dove coming down. There's a close up of it. Man, it just looks it looks just spiritual, doesn't it? I mean, you know. The, the devil possessed people that carved these things at the Vatican. I just, ugh, man, special place in hell for him, I'll tell you what. But there you got the dove, dove again. And it looks kind of somewhat like fire around him. And then here you have, there it is back there, that big stained glass thing. And here you have this big, huge, weird, hideous 
snake looking alder and look up in here uh oh let's see if we can get a picture of that yes we can Let me zoom in a little bit here so you can actually see that thing right there it is the dove again hmm there you have the uh, Gnostic Catholic Church the Gnostic Catholic Church there Ecclesia is the Greek word for church but uh, notice the upside down dove coming down in there but are there any other organizations that would use that how about that one you say what's this this is the symbol for the Ordo Templi Orientis Aleister Crowley's whole satanic system ritual sacrificing of young boys and things all seeing eye of Ra the upside down dove coming down all the stuff here look at this order Templi orientis here you have the red is the what they tell the Christian type of a thing this is the Christian explanation and then you have the occult over here all side seeing I represents the Apostle Paul in terms of Christianity chapter and verse on that one please I don't think so I have Ra, Horse, Baylor, Polyphemus, Hera, etc. There's a lot of occult um, legends and lores and things about this one-eyed, you know, God. And of course, you understand the Antichrist is his right eye is darkened in the time of Jacob's trouble. He's, there's an assassination attempt, and his right eye is darkened, so he has one eye. Interesting. Here you have the occult is Athena, Ishtar, Morgan, Osiris, etc. Over here you have the quote-unquote Christian one it says dove represents the Virgin Mary in terms of Christianity hmm isn't that kind of weird no it's the Holy Spirit yeah down here you have represents the Apostle Barnabas in terms of Christianity this whole thing here over here actually the occult thing is Baal Saturn Seth Lucifer etc so I thought that was interesting there you have Calvary Chapel the downward pointing Dove. Did you ever see that? Dove coming down. There again. Ordo Templi Orianus. Compare the two. There you have Masonic Art Shop. Not DE. Over in Deutschland. Ordo Temp The OTO there. Ordo Templi Orientis. Hmm. And how about that symbol? The infamous. Uh, Trinity Broadcasting Network. They brought out the abominations of Benny Hinn and a lot of the other charismatic uh, charismatic devils, Paul Crouch and some of these other Trinity Broadcasting Network. Hmm. And the uh, upside down dove flying down. Hmm. A white horse. A lion. Who is it that comes riding a white horse? You say, well, Jesus. Well, Revelation 19, yeah. But there's another rider that comes on a white horse before then. Hmm. There's a whole lot more I can say on that one, but, uh, you know, yeah. But I'm going to show you a picture here. Uh, okay. Sorry about that. I had to find it quick. I did find a picture. And I think that this could actually be the Trinity. I don't know for sure. But I think that this could be it. All right. Ready? It's exciting. Here it is. There you go. <laughs> Just having a little bit of fun. You know, there you got the Anderson, Breaker, Fenninger there. That's the Trinity. <laughs> it's the bird brain back here. <laughs> so, it's just, you know, don't fall for this stuff, brethren. I mean... The Lord is not composed of three separate bodies, three separate persons, but actually they're two persons and one bird. And the stuff is, is wicked. The more you look into it, the more you research it, the more you see papists defending this Trinity thing, the more you realize this thing has a big part of the end times. Um, I do believe that it's tied in with the Antichrist system. Now let me show you that real quick again. If you're not familiar with this, Revelation chapter 16. Um, Notice this, verse 13, 16, verse 13. Hmm, interesting number. And I saw three unclean spirits. How many? Three. 
like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophets. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth under the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of, Almighty, of God Almighty. Beast. Or excuse me, dragon. Beast. False prophet. Three. See, if some guy just shows up and he says, you know, I'm Christ and whatever, you know, the Antichrist, oh, well, that'd be pretty impressive. But what if you could bring all three into it? Hmm. How about that one? It's really something to think about. Be careful who you listen to.